Hello friends, my name is Manifesto and today we're going to get right back into our Slime Fun tutorial series. Today we're going to be talking about tools, weapons, and items that Slime Fun has to offer in Slime Fun 4. We got a lot of material to cover this time, so I'm going to keep this really quick. Please, if you haven't already, please subscribe. Check the subscribe button. It only takes two seconds. It's completely free and it helps me out a ton. Thank you so much. Let's get right back into it. All right, today we're going to be covering weapons, useful items, and tools. Those are the categories we're going to be covering. So make sure you unlock all those. First, we're going to start with our weapons. First, we have our grandma's walking stick, which is just a knockback two stick. It's just three oak logs and an enhanced crafting table. We already know what that is. We already know how to make it. Good, easy. Next, we have grandpa's walking stick. It's just a knockback five stick. It's three logs, two leather, and it gives you a knockback five stick. Very simple. Here's the thing about grandma's walking stick and grandpa's walking stick. Both of these are disenchantable. What I mean by that is that you can put them in a slime fun auto disenchanter and get the corresponding enchantments out. Now, if you don't know what an auto disenchanter is yet, that's totally fine. We're going to cover them in another video. I just wanted to let you guys know that now so that you'll know when we cover the auto disenchanters. Next, we have our sword of beheading. Now, the sword of beheading is ideally used for wither skeleton skulls because we need a lot of nether stars for late game slime fun. Now, beheading two already has a higher chance than looting three to behead with their skeletons. However, you can also put looting three on it. On the screen, I'm gonna put some stats that I've done after shooting this video on how much you get from beheading two and how much you get from beheading two with looting three, as well as how much you get from just looting three. The sort of beheading is just Magical lump, two emeralds, and a blaze rod. And, and tier two magical lumps are just composed of four tier one magical lumps, which are just made of nether warts in your grindstone. And remember, our grindstone is this one right here. Now this is just a quick example of the beheading sword in action. Here we have our creeper head. Next we have our blade of vampires. Now the blade of vampires, the key part of it is that every time you attack something, you have a 45% chance to recover two hearts of your health. Now this is huge. On average, you're recovering two hit points, which is one heart every time you attack. This is absolutely massive, but it's not the only thing Blade of Vampires is good for. Through auto disenchanting, we can actually take off the Unbreaking 4 Sharpness 2 and Fire Aspect 2. The key part being, we can get Unbreaking 4. Now, we can't get the Lifesteal 1 off of it, but that's to be expected. Being able to get Unbreaking 4 is already huge. In addition to getting Knockback 5, now we already have some past vanilla enchantments that we're able to get with regular slime fun. Now the Blade of Vampires is composed of a Blaze Rod and two Wither Skeleton Skulls. Pretty simple as far as crafting recipes go. Our next weapon is our Seismic Axe. Now the Seismic Axe doesn't have any attributes or enchantments to make it super exciting, but its ability is pretty cool. However, making it takes a lot of materials. Our elemental staff, which is composed of just a ton of stuff. I'm not even gonna explain how to make all this stuff in this tutorial because it's gonna be covered in a later one and hardened metal, which is a tedious to make alloy composed of a lot of dust and a lot of carbon, which is composed of coal. Now let's see this effect in action. We're just gonna take our illusioner friend here. Okay. And now let's see exactly what it does. On attacking, it's just a regular ax. You are really jumpy. But the right click effect is rather pronounced. And there you go. Our next items are our soulbound items, our soulbound sword, our soulbound trident, and soulbound bow. Now these are pretty simple. Essentially all they do is that when you die, they stay with you. So for example here, I'm just gonna kill myself. And they're right here. So they didn't drop on death. Instead, they came to me in my new inventory. Now these weapons are all made the same way. They take two Essence of Afterlife and the actual item in the middle. The Essence of Afterlife is a pretty advanced resource requiring the Ancient Altar and a variety of other runes and lumps that we're going to talk about in detail during our Ancient Altar and Talisman video. Our next item is our Explosive Bow. Now this is a pretty simple crafting recipe compared to the Soulbound items, however still does require an Elemental Staff. Now the Elemental Staff does have a pretty tedious crafting recipe requiring more Elemental Staffs and a Lava Crystal which is going to require the use of an Ancient Altar. So if you're confused, you can feel free to hold off on this one until I come out with the video. Now the explosive bow sort of does what it promises. When it shoots the ground, it does nothing. However, when it shoots an enemy, 
it pushes him up a little bit into the air. It's not quite the jarring, amazing effect that you'd expect from the explosive bow, but... I mean, it kind of works. One thing to note, though, is that if you are close to the mob, you will be affected by the blast. Now, finally, our last weapon is the Icy Bow. Now, this one is basically the combat meta for any server that has it enabled. This one actually does exactly what it promises. If you are hit with an Icy Bow, player, mob, does not matter, the enemy cannot move for two seconds. It basically gives it a really high slowness value for those two seconds. Now it's basically just made from ice, a couple of sticks, and an elemental staff of water, which will require the ancient altar. The effect, however, is pretty incredible. So we're gonna go ahead and place a couple of turtle eggs here and place a zombie here. Now he's gonna go try and break the turtle eggs once he realizes they're there. There he goes. And now he can't move. Now I'm gonna hit him again and he still can't move, and now he's dead. But you get the idea. This works on players and mobs, and so it's really, really, really effective in combat. All of the weapons in Slime Fun are enchantable. However, Slime Fun weapons cannot have their enchantments changed via a regular vanilla anvil. They must be enchanted and disenchanted using Slime Fun auto enchanters and auto disenchanters, which we will have a video dedicated to. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and move on to our useful items. First on our useful items is a portable crafter. This is exactly what it says. It just opens up a crafting table whenever you right click it, and it's just made with a book and a crafting table in your enhanced workbench. So here's an example of it in action. Wow, incredible. Now moving on is our portable dustbin, which also does exactly what it says it does. It's just an item destroyer. So it's just eight iron in your enhanced crafting table. And here we go. Now this is pretty useful if you oftentimes finding yourself or finding yourself running out of inventory space because of all, a bunch of junk items that you keep picking up again. Say you're farming XP and you don't want all those extra ender pearls, but you're not having them funneled into chests. This is a pretty easy way to get rid of them. So we're gonna go ahead and use it to get rid of our portable crafter. And there you go, it's gone. And there's no way we're ever getting it back, so that's nice. Our next item is our rag. Now this also is just medical supply, restores two hearts, extinguishes fire, made with cloth, string, and cloth. Now if we divide up the crafting recipe of the rag, each rag costs three-eighths of a wool and one string. And these items are stackable. Our next item is a bandage. Now this is a level two medical supply, just restores four hearts, extinguishes fire. It is stackable and just requires two rags and a string. Now the bandage is twice as effective as the rag, but actually only costs a half of a string more to make, even though rags are used in the crafting recipe because it uses two rags but produces four bandages. What this essentially means is that never use your rags, always turn them into bandages if that's the route you're going. Next we have our splints. They just do a base restoration of two hearts and are very simple to make, two iron and three sticks. That means that each splint takes three fourths of a stick to make and half an iron ingot. Finally, we have our vitamins. Now, personally, I recommend that vitamins are the only medical supply you use. This is because in addition to restoring four hearts, it also extinguishes fire, cures poison, withering effects, and radiation effects, which are slime fun effects given to you by radioactive materials such as uranium, plutonium, etc. Vitamins are made with a tin can, an apple, a red mushroom, and sugar. Now, while the tin cans are very easy to make, only requiring one tin ingot per can, and sugar's pretty easy to come by as long as you have a good farm set up, red mushrooms and apples can be a bit harder to come by. However, as long as you have a dark oak forest, you can always get red mushrooms in plenty. Otherwise, going to the nether roof is a very easy way to get it. Now, what I suggest for farming apples in the most effective way is going to a dark oak forest with a hoe enchanted with efficiency, unbreaking, and fortune three. So you can just clear the leaves on the roof of the forest and farm as many apples as your heart desires. In addition, vitamins are also stackable, unlike our next item, which is medicine, which provide the exact same effects and benefits as vitamins do. However, medicine is harder to make and provides no additional benefits whatsoever. It requires heavy cream, which is just milk, a glass bottle, which we all know how to make that, and vitamins. So you're essentially removing the ability to stack your medical supplies for no additional benefit whatsoever. Don't make medicine, it's not worth it. It literally does nothing compared to vitamins. Next, we have our backpacks. Now backpacks are one of the most useful things in Slime Fun for adventures, miners, just about everyone. Now a backpack 
is just a right clickable storage space. Each one with varying sizes all the way up to a radiant backpack, which is a full double chest. You can have more than one of these. The only thing you can't do is nest backpacks. See, if I try here, I can't even pick it up because it's gonna immediately put it back in my inventory, but I can put everything else in it. Backpacks are made with a nested crafting recipe, meaning that in order to make a backpack, you must use a small backpack. And in order to make a large backpack, you have to use a backpack. This goes all the way up to a radiant backpack. Now, all of the recipes for backpacks are essentially the same, except for the woven backpack, which uses cloth instead of leather. But all the other backpacks just use leather and gold ingots of varying carat level. Now, the way you make gold ingots with varying carat level, starting from four all the way up to 24, is just with gold dust. Now, here's how we make carat gold. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go to our smeltery and put our gold dust in. Let's start with just one. Now just doing it once is going to give us a four carat gold ingot. Now this is one of those scenarios where you have to decide whether you want to use your output chest or not. Because if I were to stick two in there, I'm still going to get two four carat gold ingots. However, say I take this away and I put three in. Now I have one eight carat gold ingot. So instead of having four four carat gold ingots, I now have one eight carat gold ingot. Now there's a way to do it even still if you want to use your output chest. Let's go ahead and place that back. All we're gonna do is take three gold dust and three four carat gold ingots, put them in, right click three times, and we're gonna get gold ingot of six carat level. To get this up to eight, all we have to do is do the same thing again. Now we can do this all the way up to 24 with any number of ingots as long as it's not more than 64. However, one thing we need to be careful about using this method is that we don't overplace gold dust because if we do that, we're gonna end up with extra four karat gold. Just a couple of quick useful numbers. If you're using the smeltery without the output chest, you can just put 11 gold dust in and that is going to give you 24 karat gold. In addition, you can multiply this however many times you want. Say I want to make two 24 karat gold ingots. I can just put 22 dust in there. And now we have our two 24 karat gold ingots. Now that we're done with all that, let's move on to our cooler. Now, one issue with Slime Fun is that on higher GUI scales, some of our descriptions are going to be cut off. That's fine. We can always turn our GUI scale down. For me though, I'm just going to put it in my inventory and we can look at it here. Now essentially what the cooler does is it acts as a backpack that we can only put juices in. Now if you remember in our first video, we have this sweet berry juice. We can just take that from our juicer right here and put it in our cooler. Now whenever I get hungry, it's gonna automatically feed the sweet berry juice to me, consume it, and leave the glass in there so that I never have to worry about my own hunger levels. This is extremely useful, especially in combat scenarios where you wanna keep your hunger maxed out all the time. Our cooler is made from three cloth, five aluminum, and a cooling unit. A cooling unit is just made from aluminum, six ice, and an electric motor. Now you probably haven't made an electric motor yet if you're just following along with the series. Uh, otherwise, you're gonna find that it's basically going to be used in 90% of the things we're making later on in Slime Fun. I have faith in your guys' ability at this point to be able to read the crafting recipes and understand how to make something based on those crafting recipes, except for some of those more challenging ones like the Ancient Altar, which we have yet to cover. But if you have any questions whatsoever about how to make any of the things required for electric motor or anything else, feel free to leave them in the comment section and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Finally, our last item is our tape measure. Now the tape measure is an extremely simple item item to use, a little bit challenging to make, but pretty simple in the large scale of things. It just takes silicon, which is a block of quartz, smelted down, gilded iron, which is just 24 karat gold with iron dust, four yellow dye, and a piece of string. It works exactly as it says it does. So you crouch and right click to set the anchor point, and then right click to measure. Now this works on all axes regardless of distance even if the starting chunk is unloaded which is really cool and really nice about this. However it does not work across dimensions because I have no idea how that would even work. All right that about covers it for our items. Now a quick review of weapons and items. I just want to highlight those key items that you are going to have to build in order to stay in the meta if you will of slime fun. The sword of beheading is absolutely necessary 
for getting wither skulls in slime fun. The Blade of Vampires is used in a lot of servers that have slime fun enabled in combat. However, it's not used as a primary weapon. It's used as a weapon to regenerate some health while in combat. Your soul bound weapons are essentially always used when possible. And your icy bow is cheese key in any server that has it enabled in slime fun. Of your useful items, your portable crafter is extremely useful. Vitamins will save lives no matter what the scenario is. A tape measure is always good for builds. Cooler is essential for combat and survival and radiant backpacks are useful for everything. I personally generally keep three to five in my inventory at all times. Just make sure to keep them organized, otherwise you're gonna hate yourself later. All right guys, so this video turned out to be way longer than expected just because of how much content we covered. So I went ahead and split it into two parts. The next part will be coming out tomorrow. In any case, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. And if you found it helpful, please subscribe. It's completely free. You can always unsubscribe later. It only takes two seconds to check the button. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. Once again, thank you guys so much, and I will see you next time.